Hi guys, my name is Barodante, and welcome back to my horror game character creation development process. I really need to come up with like a sketchy group of words for this, but whatever. <laughs> so we're back to our witness number two, aka an average human-like monster from the game, which in this case is a possessed farmer's wife. Now, the model is exactly in the same state as it was when we left it, and today I wanted to do one special side quest about modeling here. We're gonna have another modeling episode here, like um, sculpting details episode, but today we're changing the eyeballs. So, as I mentioned previously, witnesses are gonna be this, not the most powerful, but this pretty much possessed people that belong to the area where the level is. One special feature about them is that their bodies are not really their bodies anymore, and someone else, someone very non-human and maybe godlike in a way, is looking through their eye sockets with its own eyeballs. And this is the version 1.0 of these eyeballs, but all of this is pretty bad and I thought of repainting them a little bit and generally I liked the shape of the holes in here. But recently I had this idea, let's totally redo them because this is a pretty lame design and I wanna introduce something really cool to the witness characters and actually to all the character, all the creatures and all the special creepy things in the world. They will have one special feature that I keep calling a touch of infinity. So, whatever we create that will be this abnormal, creepy stuff going on, whether it's a part of a character or part of the location, it needs to have the touch of infinity. I'm gonna go ahead and experiment a little bit today with what that means. I have a certain trick in mind on how to make that work. So, yeah, today we're remodeling reimagining the eyeballs for our witnesses. Let's go. Also, I've just baked the most beautiful set of cottage cheese cupcakes, but that's off topic. So I actually want to do the whole new eyeball thing in a very special and cool modern way of doing it in Blender which is by creating an asset file, which means I'll have one little file where I just have the eyeball. There we go, that's our eyeball. Clean and simple. Now I'll clean up the file because I pasted in all kinds of stuff and I'm gonna save it into my presets assets folder that Blender can pick up and see right here in the asset browser. If I go to my presets, here are my assets and the eyeball will be one of them if I mark it as asset like this. There it is. So we'll be able to access that from any other file we work on, any other witnesses throughout the whole game that I'll be creating in Blender. I'll be able to just paste in another eyeball like this. And then if I'll suddenly come up with, the, you know, changing the design again or something, then I'll just be able to open up this uh, witness eye.blend file and change something and all the witnesses will have new eyeballs as well. So that's pretty cool. And also at the bottom here, you guys can see it here, uh, this is another two windows of Blender open with uh, my other witnesses. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to replace their eyeballs with this asset eyeball. So whenever I'll be doing any kind of changes to it, it will be updating here. It's a pretty important thing to do to actually see how this eyeball looks in the models. So let's start with modeling. One thing I wanted to do, so how I would show the infinity, generally I'm seeing it as showing some kind of repetition that seems to go forever. It doesn't mean it has to actually go forever, but it feels like it's not actual infinity, it's the touch of, of infinity, right? So 
The point is, something repeats forever. It seems like it's happening forever, but it's like an imprint, right? So it happens somewhere, like some kind of recursion, some kind of fractal or something like that. And we'll need to have like these sort of like ribs going on or some kind of rid ridges or whatever it would be, you know? Oh my God, they stay in 3D. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Can I draw on the surface? That would be kind of useful for concepting. Oh, there is stabilization. Oh, smooth drawing. Nice. What else though? 3D cursor surface. So now I can really design. Let's actually use this thing. This is awesome. So yeah, this was one of the ideas, right? To show it outside. But also, it would be much cooler to have maybe a smooth, shiny surface in here, right? With the shines and everything. But in here, we would have like a considerate hole that wouldn't be like this, what seems to be an infinity sign now, which was not my intention at all. This wasn't like the point of this is the touch of infinity. Please don't think that. That was before I kind of re remembered that I wanted to do the touch of infinity. And in this case, I wanted to like show those lines like this. So when you look at the eyeball at this angle, it's like a hole that's going like that with a lot of very high contrast circles that may be like pretty big in a way, like almost taking all the volume that the eyeball allows just to make that effect really weird like hollow eyes with a whole lot of these circles inside that would be pretty dope so yeah um i am thinking like this shape of the iris or the pupil and yeah we won't be going with such sharp outlines of the edge of this pupil or anything but inside there will be pretty insane stuff going on Oh, I don't even think I need to change the topology. The topology totally wasn't really made customly for that the shape that it had. It's actually for the shape we have now. Should I go perfectly symmetrical? Nah. You know what? It won't actually give me a lot of help here anyway. But yeah, topology I will need to definitely improve inside. I'll need a lot more polygons to show those ribs or whatever the touch. Because, yeah, I feel like the witnesses are turning out pretty cool, but their eyeballs are like... Like, I, I get it, but first of all, they don't really read well from the distance right now. With this very complex and thin line around the pupil. And it, it's not really saying anything. I kind of mentioned before that it was all, like, temporary, maybe. Like, I wanted to rethink it, so here we are. So yeah, let's just go ahead and position these vertices that we have. Uh, is it Shift S or Alt S? Shift Alt S? Yeah, to sphere, a cool modifier that makes anything round. Shift Alt S, yeah, perfect circle or a sphere if it's a three-dimensional shape. Okay, that's a bit too big, something like this. I'm not like uh, obsessed with making everything perfectly aligned or something. This is, you know, soft surface modeling. And so I should probably be thinking right away, not just about, you know, making the even spread of polygons here, but the edges. What the hell did I create a polygon in there? Yeah, I did hit F by accident. That filled the ring. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so I shouldn't worry about like creating an even density of topology or anything. I need to make sure that at a certain angle, like at this angle, there will be a certain, you know, amount of these lines. And these lines would be best to show with like dedicated polygons for them. In terms of uh, further sculpting, you know, I'll, I'll get to work with the more polygons where I actually need them. It's not super important, but that's just what I'm thinking about right now. So yeah, it'll probably go into like a black hole closer to the center. So it kind of looks like it's always looking at you. Like this will be a black little thing that at any angle, it kind of looks at you a little bit from the infinite insides, you know. Hopefully it'll work, I don't know. 
In order to show like this is going pretty far in or whatever, we need to increase the amount of these guys closer to the end. Kinda. Shouldn't have that one, I think. Uh, this one should go closer over here. And this one as well. Yeah, that gives you the fake feeling of perspective, like this is getting closer fast. A little bit. Okay, let's actually start sculpting with multi-resolution and everything. I'll go to the second step right away to have some density. So, uh, oh cool, there is a radial symmetry here, that's awesome. So Y axis then, let's have like six. Looks like it's working guys, that's pretty cool. I don't think I ever tried it. Whoa. Yeah, let's try and have like more just to make sure we can draw an actual like line. Increasing that distance right here. How big can it get? 20. Because it needs to be like walls and I'm like only drawing spikes on the circle, which is not exactly what it should be. Actually grabbing is a better idea. I don't think my strategy with positioning polygons exactly where I need them really worked. But I mean, I can subdivide the hell out of it anyway. It seems like I need quite a lot of polygons pretty much everywhere in here anyway. But yeah, it's best to be safe and try your best to plan ahead if you can. Obviously, we need a few more subdivisions. Also, we definitely need another one here. Hmm, I accidentally made a line in here. Maybe it's actually kind of cool, because their eyeballs stick out a lot. So this could be like seen and might, you know, be kind of cool. And what's cool about the eyeballs they won't be deforming, so they're gonna be nanite. I won't have to even like bother making them low polygon or something. They'll be like super high polygon at all times. And theoretically, I'll be able to get away with that. All right, let's select, I don't know, a basic color to start with. Generally, like warmer colors, like maybe iodine stained bandages kind of color <laughs> or maybe even a wider specter of yellow would be like the theme color of the story you know so i'm just gonna select this color here and i'm saving it in order to use in my other two witnesses let's see if i'll be able to do it nicely Okay, it's really important. I don't know why this is not by default on the link setting. Because if you forget that you're on link, it's okay. Because you can overwrite and have it whatever. But if you forget that it's not on link, it's having to redo a lot of things, usually. <laughs> so that's not cool. What I'm trying to say is link means when I paste in an eyeball right here, it will actually be like live linked to the source, like to this file at all times. But you can also just append and then you can change this eyeball and whatever. It's just like a storage for your models, but you can change them and they, they won't be connected to the source file anymore. It is just a library of your models then. But it's way better to be able to use the models and then be able to replace them if you need to, you know. So, I wonder, how is this eyeball connected here? It's actually rigged. Hmm. Okay, so they're in place. Not rigged in or anything, but I think I can do like a data transfer or something. Oh cool, it already works. <laughs> so yeah, you 
go ahead and create that data transfer and you pick the eyeball that you want your new eyeball to act as and you transfer the vertex data which is literally dictating how the eyeball is connected to the rig yeah you need to click vertex groups and then you apply the armature to the rig on top of that as well and that's it it's already live and working you can turn it off at any point or you can apply and just have the new eyeballs rigged oh my god and pose mode and the eyeballs are in the grandma not looking great so far not exactly the effect i was going for so let's keep working like when you turn off the lighting yeah so what it means is we definitely need to remove the like shadow like they need to glow inside because it will be just a dark vague hole so let's uh paste in the eyeball to the grandpa almost forgot I mean, one way you can definitely tell is that when you paste it in and you can totally freely move it around, that means you forgot to turn on the link because link means it will lock everything, including the positioning. Like right now, I can't move it around. Everything's locked. So the first thing you do when you import, as far as I know, I don't know how to set up what exactly you can automatically let go and override on any asset, but so far, you just click override on only selected not the contact or selected and contact, just selected so you unlock this stuff and you can just move this thing around now so yeah duplicate now we have two eyeballs rest pose selection to active and that's snap selection to active and then data transfer and armature oh my god I kind of like that it's like flash color, close to the flash color. So that's that's pretty good. It's kind of continuing their skin, you know, but totally not. I mean, like it's light, but still like foreign. Like it's obvious that it's not a part of this body exactly. Okay, so grandpa needs deeper holes in his head, apparently. Oh, they're not deep at all, his holes. <laughs> That's better. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, a more of a finished model of Grandpa's face is looking pretty striking. But of course, with lighting turned on, it won't have that effect so far. So let's make sure we make it work. So yeah, after this, as I mentioned, it doesn't update immediately automatically in open projects so even though i have them right here showing up and everything they won't actually like whenever i just hit Control s in the main document it won't immediately replace in here and there is no like just button to do it the mechanics to update is simply by closing and opening or just reopening the document meaning you can just go ahead and just click file open recent and select the same document the the one that's at the top of the list so it will just reopen the document you have already open and it will just update all the assets in the document now I know I need one texture already and that would be the emission because without it I don't really see how things actually turn out to be now I wonder if 1024 pixels will be enough for just eyeballs that's not a big surface but it's like double though i mean i'm definitely kind of too early for for this right i don't really have final uvs or anything on this because there's definitely not enough pixels in the uv surface here U uv map L let's do it here now because we are set on the topology anyway so this whole thing is the most important part but now we definitely need to cut out the insides and put in put them separately because they're like even more important starting over there all of this is very important Okay, I need to check this. UV have no idea what I did. 
yeah that that's too much of a difference it'll be visible that one one island is so sharp and another one will be suddenly very fuzzy so i'm gonna probably break this into two pieces i don't think i'm gonna regret this or anything i'm spending way too much time on this okay i think this is pretty good let's see what an automatic thing can do if it can just work please it worked that's worse than what I did. Whatever. Whatever, man. So yeah, something like this. Not too strong of a difference, but this is more important, so I'm putting more polygons here. I'll probably go ahead and actually texture it well in substance later, but right now, since we're modeling, we want to see the basic idea of what's gonna happen, so I think this should happen here. Well, that's glowing, all right. Especially here, probably. Yeah. So I, I should probably do that in a UV, UV map. Now let's see, I want it to be like that orange glow, kind of like this, but much better. <laughs> let's say we're in the dark, as we should be. Oh, that's not dark at all, actually. Well, at least like this. Okay, that. Now, not as strong, probably. Also, curve it out a bit. Hmm, stronger on the black pupil part. Oh, it, it also needs to not be bright in that part of the texture, of the color of the surface. If anything, color of the surface should be like black. Yeah, I just need to paint on it then as well. So in here, I need to paint that blackness. Oh my god. But pretty much. <laughs> We'll see how it goes together. Yeah, it's definitely, by the way, is gonna be pretty, pretty rough, at least inside. And that's actually another texture I could definitely use. Roughness. Like, I'm gonna make it actually white to completely remove glossiness and then I'll add a little bit on the surface because the outside surface of the ball I kind of want it to be shiny and flashy a bit but inside where it's glowing there's no place for actual shine in there it will break the whole effect so all of this is white not for long like this this much I guess whoa that's slow <laughs> So overall, I think this is the distribution of it that I would like. Of course, with a lot of cool textures that will also support the whole infinity circles probably somehow, but that'll be done another day or whatever. For now, I just wanna have this basic look. Now let's go back to our glowing and bring back some of that brightness after removing it in the base color. There we go, shiny, matte, and glowing. And yeah, dark inside, having a good look on those ribs. Of course, uh, like, one thing I'll definitely do is I'll make sure the, uh, like, there will be, like, gradients, more brightness on the ribs at the very, like, tips of them. But right now it's hard to do because in Blender it's hard to paint in texture paint mode because you can't use, like, cavity maps or whatever. I mean, I kind of have it here in the shader nodes. 
Let's see, this kind of mask, as much as it can work. Yeah, that. And we kind of multiply that with our glow. So yeah, something like this, only without the glitches that Blender gives me. <laughs> Maybe a good base. Now, that will be probably the version 1.0 1, 1 for this future new eyeball of the witnesses. What does it look like in EV? Well, it kind of works, I guess. Uh, can I like really make you glow, please? Okay, that's what you can do. Obviously, I'll bake all the all these nose into simple textures later. But for now, let's see. I hope it works. What happened? Okay, now they just turned out to be black for some reason. Seems like it has everything in place. Oh, I really need to save all the textures. Save all images, please. I wonder if that's why it didn't update in other files, because the textures don't exist yet or something. There we go, Jesus. At least that thing reminded me. That's like the worst thing about Blender. You can work on multiple textures for hours, saving the Blender document without saving the textures, and then you close Blender, reopen it, and all your textures are black. Nice. How do you like my new eyeballs? Nice. Nice. She said nice, so it's, it's good to go. Well, I mean, this is definitely looking way better than what we used to have, even though the colors are not working exactly the way they should. They will in cycles here, I think. Yeah, maybe too bright <laughs> for cycles. But yeah, I really like this infinity rings going deep inside like that i think is pretty cool and yeah definitely more work needed to make sure it works in different lighting and everything because right now it's like when it's lit it's not really showing through all that well looking way better on this finished grandpa that's for sure just kind of feel like it it just needs to be more red and dark oh yeah that's a bit better and that these are much better colors now even in Eevee, probably in Cycles, there will be very close actually, yeah. So this works pretty damn well. So yeah, some tweaking on making sure that the rings really give you the feeling of that fake perspective. And just more details and everything. I think these eyeballs are gonna be really cool with uh, a bit higher contrast on those rings in there. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. All right, now we can keep working on our grandma and actually make her looking much cooler than what she is right now in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you there. Bye. Yeah, things, designs turn out way better when you actually turn on your brain.